You've probably never heard of him, but this pterosaur deserves its own fan club. Mark Witten is a paleobiologist on assignment. He says more people should know about one impressive flying animal that lived more than 65 million years ago, Arambergiania philadelphiae. Arambergiania was a pterosaur a group of reptiles that includes pterodactyls, but which is different from dinosaurs. Lived at the end of the Cretaceous period, at the same time as the Tyrannosaurus rex. Like the Tyrannosaurus rex, Arambergiania was big an estimated wingspan of about 10 m, and an unusually long neck, was one of the largest flying organisms that ever lived mostly the size of a small airplane. Flying animal with a neck like a giraffe's, Zwitten, who works at the University of Portsmouth. Quite remarkable. Not so long ago, Witten wrote a blog post claiming that Arambergania deserves a fan club. He noted that a number of other large pterosaurs of the same period, such as Quetzalcoatl Northropi, are generally better known. It is possible that Arambergania as a whole was a little smaller, it is special for another reason. Know that his neck may have been almost 3 meters long. Flying animal with a neck like a giraffe. It's quite remarkable is about twice as long as another giant pterosaur, Witten explains. It is difficult to say anything definitive about this impressive species of pterosaur, but what we know about its neck is based on one of the few remaining fossils, a vertebra, in this case a neck bone. Mysteriously, no one knows when it was discovered, since no documentation has survived, but Witten believes it most likely occurred in the 1930s or early 1940s. We do know that it was found in Jordan, and that the specimen was written about in a 1954 article by Camille Arambert, French paleontologist from whom the pterosaur got its name. The fossil itself is a long, thin tubular bone, which indicates that the animal's neck was massive and probably quite flexible. Like a pole on the end of an airplane, is Michael Habib, a paleontologist at the Keck School of Medicine at the University of Southern California. Certainly very interesting because we're not used to seeing flying animals with long, relatively inflexible necks, he adds. Wasn't super flexible, like the neck of a heron or a swan. For an artificial airplane made of metal, having such a large mass up front would be a problem, but Habib explains that a flying animal could compensate for its balance during flight by adjusting its wings and shoulders. This is probably what Arambergiania and other giant pterosaurs with a similar profile did. Fossil skulls indicate that these creatures often had freakishly large heads, although they were lighter than they looked, thanks to the thin but rigid bone structure. In addition to the vertebrae, we have several other fossils that probably belong to Arambergiania, including the end of a wing bone or face lengths. They help us learn a little more about what this ancient flyer looked like. It notes that much more fossil material has been preserved for species like Quetzalcoatlus northropi, which helps explain why more has been written about this species in the press and discussed in museum exhibits. New material is emerging all the time, which leaves open the possibility that we will soon know much more about Arambergiania than we do today. Last year, for example, researchers from the University of Michigan discovered several new fossils that they believe belong to a pterosaur. More material means paleobiologists can better guess how these giants actually lived, including how they moved and flew. Habib says that there are certain things we can rule out about a pterosaur like Arambergiania just because of its enormous size. For example, it could not have constantly flapped its wings to stay in the air because that would have required too much energy. It also would not have been very maneuverable especially with such a pole-like neck. However, Arambergiania could probably hover for long periods of time and may even have had such a range that it could, in fact, have gone around the world. One piece of evidence hints at this. We continue to find fossils of giant pterosaurs of various species in regions ranging from Eastern Europe to North America, Middle East, and Asia. If they had a global range, you'd have to find them everywhere and they generally are, Habib says. Pterosaurs are much more than just pterodactyls, and that fact partly explains why Witten wants to celebrate Aramburgia. Like teaks or woolly mammoths, it's a species that members of the public, not just academic researchers, should know about, he says. After all, it too, is part of our planet's long and varied history. In addition, for new Arambergian fans, he notes, there's considerable credibility on the street. You're a member of the Arambergiania fan club, you can honestly say you liked giant pterosaurs before they were cool, he jokes. You're a tougher pterosaur fan. Go ahead and be like Arambergiania. Take your neck out.